down, please. And he's going on and on. You don't know what you know what you what we've done. We've been building you this Mercedes. Oh my God! Innocent people are being screwed. I am going to take you to court, but I'm going to finish this house with my own money, and then I'm going to take you to court. Everything's garbage here. Let's take it down. I've never ever seen a job so bad in my life. You're being sued for three hundred and forty-three thousand dollars. I'm going to rip the front penthouse down. That's what I'm going to do. It's a hole in the ground. <laughs> I, I own a hole in the ground. Nice. Awesome. We're well, going to do it. Do it right the first time. Take it down. All of this whole area in the top. This place has been so butchered. Innocent people are being screwed. Unbelievable. On the money. Two, three. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you had us at the floor. <laughs> yeah. So far, so good. Imagine owning a home. And wanting to do an addition, hiring a contractor, going through all the procedures, permits, everything necessary. And your world changes almost overnight. I moved into that little house on my own with my mom, 13, almost 14, 14 years, years ago, ago now. It was one bathroom yeah. and three bedrooms, a small kitchen, a small living dining room. It was nice, though. We'd, you know, we'd finished it up. I'd painted, done my fancy uh, paint job paint in the job living room the with the sponging. In 1997, Joe and I got married. When Joe moved in, it was still quite comfortable. When we had Juliana, we started to think about more space. Hired a contractor, worked with them on the home, actually friend of the family. And initially, I thought things were going pretty good. He um, digging out the garage, and then he had a crew in to do the foundation. $200,000 contract. It's not done. And they've been out of their house almost two years. By the beginning of February, on February 2nd, he has uh, a check dated for $25,000. At that point, of a $200,000 contract, he had 150 grand. Things really start going upside down after the bank puts a stop. $150,000 out, no more, because they did come in and take a look to see how much is being done. You tell your bank that, you know, warn them that, you know, well, I'll just go and put a lien on it, even then, in February. Yeah. And, they, you know, they can't be holding your money. It's it's my money. They're holding us hostage. I said, no, it's their money. They came up with the rest of the money to give them 219 by borrowing, grabbing, almost stealing from anyone they could to get to this stage. And then he's going on and on. I'm going to use my money and I'm going to, you don't know what, you know, what, you, what we've done. We've been building you this Mercedes. It's taking longer. He's not making money. He's needing more money. They don't have more money. I am going to take you to court, but I'm going to finish this house with my own money and then I'm going to take you to court. And I said... If you're going to take me to court, you might as well take me to court now. Everything started to fall apart. And the courier hands me this document, and I open it up, and it's a lien, and it says, you know, you're being sued for $543,000, of which uh, it's now down to three forty three because I guess he was counting out the 200, the 200 that, that he had. It's a right that allows them to register a claim against the property they worked on, as security for the amount that they're owed. How do you lean a home for that kind of money with a $200,000 contract? And here highlighted is the reason. The plaintiff pleads and relies upon the doctrine of unjust enrichment. In other words, what he's saying is that he's enriched the value of this home way above and beyond the $200,000 contract, so he has the legal right to lien them for $344,000 on top of the money he's already received. The homeowner has the ability to challenge that and, uh, and show, demonstrate that there's no way it could be that amount of money because they don't have a contract for that amount or what the contractor did wasn't worth that amount. Our lawyer had been saying from the start, you have to secure your case. And I'm thinking, why do I have to secure my case? He's the one that has to prove that he's done what he says he's done. So I said, fine. She said, well, let's see if we can get a, an engineer's report and we'll see what we need to do next. And there's nothing under the floor, Joyce? Nothing, okay? Absolutely nothing but this. 
footings we want to see twice the width of the wall. That way we have an equal displacement on each side of it, helping bury the load of this wall. Mega problems in this one room. Yes. Okay. I don't know how they got away with this, because this was passed. That upsets me. I don't know what they've done with this bench, because I want to see the x-ray eyes to see what they've done. Look at the stairs. Obviously, these are all different heights and not the proper set of stairs. It actually supported the plate and not the beam. That should really be looked at. Same as we saw in the kitchen. We have a steel I-beam with a plate for the brick. Yeah. What do we see? Now the column's on the steel I-beam and nothing on the brick. Is this on footings? What is it sitting on? Nothing. They dug that down just enough to put a little concrete on the bottom and the blocks on top to carry all that weight load all the way up. We do one thorough examination. One thorough. He comes back, he wants it opened up. We gotta see the finishes off. Uh, that's, that's the easiest way to tell what's going on. Um, because we can't see through walls. Okay, we open it up. I'm really bothered by this. Now they gotta come up with more money to pay an engineer to put together a package which is probably in the area of $20,000 between lawyers one time, between lawyers and engineer to put this together. Not to mention all us guys in here to come in and open it up and show things that are wrong. Okay, fine. Well, I bring in my whole crew. We're going to take down all the freaking drywall in the house. We're going to do a thorough inspection, a cost report on what it's going to take to fix this. Dollar after dollar after dollar continues to come out of their pocket, and they're nowhere ahead yet. Where do I see screws? Do you see any screws? Any screws whatsoever in that drywall? Any screws? One screw. Come on. Whoever the electrician was puts out a box on the outside wall and puts up vapor barrier. What don't we see? Vapor barrier. Do you see any insulation? These are Do you see any vapor barrier? Two pieces of wonderful HVAC installed in an outside corner wall with no insulation whatsoever, running up in the void, going into upstairs with no insulation whatsoever on that side. Like this is going to hold hot air. Don't touch this. I want the engineer to see this. Look at the insulation. They missed a the cavity there? They missed a the cavity. But look at the way it's installed. It's not proper. There's no vapor barrier up in there. There's no, it's not even right against the outside edge. Exactly. Now, I just looked in the window. And look what I see in the window. Three building permits. Now, what good are permits, okay, when it's done this way? Look at that electrical plug right there. No clamps, no nothing in the corner. And it's live. And I tell everybody to get a permit. I don't think it helped these people at all. Manufactured forges. Heavy, dude. Three LVLs. I love it. I mean, we're talking major structure here. We have proper two LVLs, proper hangers, hangers, hangers. Proper. That's one good sign. This is one. Yeah, I was on this side of the house. Take a look at everything. Just because I see TJIs on the ceiling are manufactured four joists and two steel I beams that are done incorrectly, doesn't tell me that this house is good. First thing I saw was the outside, and that told me there's a whole lot of problems in here. Then I bring the engineer through. We look through the basement. What do I see? I see all kinds of crap, improper structure, improper footings, unlevel, completely unlevel, completely unsquare. How much money in drywall is coming down? How much money in structures are going to take to fix this? How much money should the homeowners put out of their pocket? I'm just stunned that this is allowed. Oh my God. Can you imagine that? On on somebody? There's no brick ties. Keep your helmets on, guys. I built your Mercedes, he said. Right? Now, we're going to open this up, and I've already seen enough wrong. We're going to open this up. We're going to see a thousand more things wrong. Should he get away with this? I built him a Mercedes, and I deserve 540 grand. Like, what do you do? Pick a number out of his hat? Walk slowly. When Juliana was 10 months old, actually, uh, Joe had to have... Um, back surgery. They fused it. They put these pins. Remember that first x-ray? Yeah, the pin through, yeah. through the spine area. They had a area. clamp about approximately the size of my hand with four pins holding it in spot. And that's what I have in my back right now. I used to have to hold Juliana up to him 
so, so that he could hug her or put, put her, her in my lap because there was no way I could lift her. And lift her. And she, when she was so little, she wanted her daddy to pick her up. <laughs> well, that's the garage right there. Not only do we see down in the basement, I can see right outside in the garage. <laughs> what do you think about exhaust fumes coming inside your house when you have kids? You hear the stories. People die. I, I say that she came to us at the right time in life because um, she was good therapy blessing. for us. Uh, we focused our attention on her, and it kept, it helped Joe have a reason to, to sort of Move get on. healthier. I'm not Hercules. So basically, Joe hasn't worked since, since 2000. Since 2000. Want to go try and find some structure? <laughs> yeah. We can't find it. Right now, yeah, we've got this block, which is kind of making up the, the difference so you can bring your brick up above the gable. And you're supposed to always support it on steel. So these guys, have they brought a steel lintel in here. It looks like it's undersized. And uh, usually you like to have it bearing on masonry if it's not too long, uh, if the masonry can handle the load, or else you want to pick it up with steel. A half-inch piece of OSB, like oriented strand board plywood, that's what's supporting the angle. You've got to be kidding him. Yeah, it's not holding anything. No. You got a lot of weight load on that, too. This angle here? Yeah. You know, pick it up? I wouldn't stand there. Yeah, it's actually supported by this brace here. This guy is holding it up. So that shifts. Not only the block fall through the finished ceiling here, but you have a crack all the way. Water's coming in here, weakening everything. It could also topple out over top. That's a really good point. I don't understand that. We can see daylight. Yeah. I'm surprised we don't have stains here on the drywall. Lucky for now, I think. Is there a foot out over there, though? There might be something just covering it. All right. There's another funny thing over there. It's not really funny, but it's actually a load bearing wall. don't have lintels. This is from a door. Probably one of the upside down doors that are in the garage. <laughs> it's actually a load bearing wall. And in front of the stairwell, there's about a six foot opening. By well, that was a open. window. We just pulled yeah. it out. But it there's no lintel at all. Is that normally how we frame something for a window? No, Mike. Oh my god. Anyways, that's the load bearing wall. That's where all the trusses are sitting on. That's really nice. So let's cut in an open window and do it all along on a load bearing wall. Yeah. Oh, you like what you see so far? No. No. <laughs> Not at all. This is the bathroom. This is the tub. We can see the fiberglass tub. Nothing supporting the tub on this side. Nothing supporting the tub on the back. No nailing edge for where the tiles are. Okay, no nailing edge. This is the only two by four they have across. Wonderful. Once we open up, we pull drywall down. What do we see? Cinder block wall, cut in, put a door in. Nothing supporting the block above it. How high does this go up? Probably on enough weight load to simply snap this and take someone's head off. We do have block above this wall, so they're holding up the block with this structure. What do they do? They don't have big enough pieces, so they piece the two by fours to hold it up. Yeah, right. We have a slope roof above us. After I take down a few things, we're going to continue to find more and more. What do we see? Insulation is packed tight to the outside, stopping air ventilation from coming up the soffit and hitting in this area, which must be a cold zone. As I look further up this way, there's the garage right there. That wall is continued to cross. No vents in the attic whatsoever. Total trapped air. This would mold in no time. Required that the electrician puts in his plastic around the box, which he did. Okay, but as the people put up the vapor barrier, they put up the vapor barrier and they put tape around this area. That's why I checked this. And as we see that, they didn't pull out the plastic to wrap it out over the plastic to create a nice air stoppage around it. It's covered up. Here we don't have tuck tape around. You can see they've cut the square out. We see they had the. All right, so it was faked again. At this. this is what he was going to hold it on with. Once this was packed with dishes, this is what he was hoping was going to hold this in. This drywall, some little 16 gauge finishing nails was going to hold that together. It's unbelievable.
one of the pipes burst. And it was like Niagara Falls up here. The water was just shooting out everywhere. Our, whatever was here was covered in ice, and it flooded the basement. So they were responsible. We're still going to pull the ceiling down and see what's up there, but they were responsible to pull this all down and put up new. The insulation is soaking wet. Look at the mold. As this will hold moisture, because we have the tar paper in behind it, which is not breathable, what we're doing is almost a vapor barrier on the backside, a vapor barrier in the front, holding the moisture. All the drywall on this wall, the backs of the drywall was completely soaked. Look at this. Brand new ductwork. HVAC all throughout the whole house. What do they do? They cut in a return and drywall over it. We see rust all along the... Uh, corner beat it shows how much water actually came in here because this is rusted now this is old but obviously they had pulled down tied back in and did some sort of plaster work to it we see wood over top of concrete we never want to see that once they had pulled the drywall they should have pulled the strapping and made sure there was some sort of protection barrier in behind the wood wood does not touch concrete surface mold Look how they cut in. This was a window before? Yeah. So they block it up, they put the ductwork right on top of the concrete. Like, if this gets cold, <laughs> right. what does it do to this? It's gonna make that cold. Not to mention it shouldn't be touching concrete, right. because why? It expands, it contracts right. with hot and cold air, right? right? No. Not to mention, I guess they like to save their plastic, okay? <laughs> it's nothing that says you really can't do this. Right. This is not six mil plastic, though. This is the equivalent to a four. This is supposed to be an underpinning. Oh. Because he did this first, right? He dropped this area, right. and then he dropped the other area for the furnace. Again, no drains in the floor. But this is supposed to be underpinning. Wow. And I don't think this is uh, qualified, really, for an underpinning job. It's just a continuing, continuing saga of finding crap after crap after crap. This is the floor that was dropped this is where the furnace was the lowest point of the floor in the house there is no drains whatsoever what happens if this floods what happens if the hot water tank floods it fills this up like crazy right in to the furnace it becomes a bathtub against code may i say you know why do people do this why do they leave the old crap up when they have the ability to take it off since the studying and drywall this no Let's cover up all the old crap that's here. This house makes me want to swear. Yeah, save the house, my ass. Show me something that's going to surprise me. Like something done right. And I might be surprised. This is the worst home possible, I think. So far. Have you seen worse? This is it, eh? Yeah. Oh, look at it. They did something right, eh? Yeah. Putting the proper covers for the pot lights in here. Yeah. This must have been built by someone else, Is this room. Is that a chewed hole? That's a chewed hole. Oh, you're right. Someone's been chewing at it. Look, look at, at this. Oh, my God. You yeah. know what that is? Yes, I do. This is definitely raccoon yeah. urine. I said mad up there? Well, at this point, you know what? There's possible raccoons in there. I doubt it. We probably scared them out of the house yeah. and gone for the day. First and foremost, let's get rid of the rest of the drywall in here. Let's pull the walls down so we can see further things. Then we'll clear everything within the walls. Then we'll drop all this, okay? okay. Thank you. Okay, buddy. Matt! I'm a little scared. Hello? No, they're not up here. Hello? I think they were, though. See this, Carlito? Yeah. They've been uh, coming in through this, because uh, they didn't close the soffits up. Look, they've just been digging at this to get into this attic. See, this is all open, right? The soffit he left open way too long. That's why they were getting in there. But this is what freaks me out. Look, he's got it resting on nothing but three pieces here. Same as the front. Yeah, it's the exact same. All the cinder block, the brick that's above it, that's a heavy, heavy load that is sitting on top of what appears to be just this 2x4. See how it's peeling off? Yeah. As you can see, it's all around. they even chipped out the OSB so it sits there. Just and you can see it's shifting. See how it's cracked in the corner up there? Yes, I do. This is just such a... It's a scary mess in here. Yes, it is. Yes, so we'll just is. be careful with the rest and we'll get out of here. We find even more to the point where we have to bring in a cost consultant to actually price what it's going to cost to fix the home.
Uh, we kind of call this project intervention, where we come in when there's a problem with the project. And in this case, the contractor has done so much work, and he's now walked off the site or been kicked off the site. So now there's a lien on the property. So we have to come in and assess the money spent to build what's here now, the amount of all the deficiencies that need to be corrected, and as well the cost to complete the project. So if this goes up to court, we can act as an expert witness and stand up and say our findings and what we think the actual costs are. Well, judging on what the structural engineer's report, he's highlighted some you know, serious problems in different areas which will require major rip out. So you've got the cost of ripping out and then the cost of rebuilding at premium because you're working with partially built uh, uh, structure and, and finishes and so forth. It's highly likely it's going to cost more. It always does cost more to do fix up than to build it right in the first time place. So we're talking large money here. We're talking over three hundred thousand in the long run. He estimates to fix the job. So this was jammed in place. Now that's a new meaning for jams. Okay. I've never seen so many things in one place. Oh, this is just the beginning, my friend. <laughs> Wait till I take you outside. <laughs> Well, it shouldn't be that easy. This is actually supposed to be all footing four feet beneath the bottom area. There's none. What's happening is your actual addition is falling away, away from, from the, the house. Home. Yeah. Did you want to buy the house? No, thank you. No? <laughs> you sure? Not in a million years. You're bargain. <laughs> then the contractor wants his own engineer. So his own engineer steps in and they start taking the place apart, digging holes under footings to prove there's no footings, digging the holes under the front of the house, the back of the house. We knew there was no footings under this at all. What I love is the engineers dug down just to prove it. No, there's no footings. What we see here is a two by eight vertically like this. Now structurally we want to see it as a beam so at least we want to see at least three in there. Well what they have is a two by four piled this way on top of each other and a face plate to put the bricks over. We can see everything starting to crack as it's starting to fall in. You see how he just poured a concrete area, put his stone on top. Even his blocks that continue this weight load right up, that's a heavy, heavy weight load. Required by code to go down at least four feet with a footing. No footings whatsoever, sitting right on the cinder block. Totally unacceptable. I don't see any footings down there. It's not even deep enough. It's not even four feet deep. Once again, holding weight load all the way up. The stone is cracking, the mortar's cracking, the brick is cracking. Not to mention, they used the wrong mortar in between the brick and in between the stone. They did it sort of ass backwards, you could say. This mortar was for the brick, this mortar was for the stone. Incorrect. You call this a footing? These guys were so thorough, they dug completely right under it just to see what was there. All he did was pour a small concrete pad here. Unacceptable. What they did was cut out the two by eight to inspect how these were in place. One, wood is touching concrete. Two, there's not enough in there, right? We don't see anything in there. It's sitting just on a little bit. And I can move the floor. That's not a good sign. This guy was in total belief that all his work was fine. As a matter of fact, he was so confident of it, he brought in his own engineers. What a mistake. I have never in a million years seen one home have so many on every single level. This is wrong. Totally built wrong. Structure's wrong. I mean, I can't say enough wrong things about it. It is so wrong. There's no sense in trying to support any of this house, pull off all the brick, all the stone, all the new foundation, redo the foundation, resupport it, and then mess with the structure that he's done upstairs. We have to remember, if this is wrong, everything's wrong. There's no knowledge here. Where's their knowledge in carpentry? Where's their knowledge in absolute structure? Not to mention plumbing. It's coming down. Say goodbye to this place. <sighs> Hallelujah. I'm thrilled because I can't walk by this house or even think about putting a pot of water on to boil in a kitchen that has been touched by this person that just brings just everything back. It's, um... Say bye to this bye. house, Juliana. Bye, house. It's taken its toll. It's going to take us a long time to recover psychologically, I think. Yes. It's taken a strain on Joe and me.
I brought in a whole team of pros to set up scaffolding for us to be safe all the way around this house so we can start from the top. Start pulling it down brick by brick, piece by piece. So one, it's safe for us. We're going to take our time on this. I wish I could bring in a bulldozer and just smash this house down, but I've got to protect that house and I've got to protect that house. Brick by brick, we're going to pull this down. Clear. This mortar is not the right mortar. You can actually see where his he laid his mud out. He put the brick down, squished it in, and what happened was it didn't grab at all. Like this should have been bonded. You shouldn't have been able to pull this off like this. This is only not even a year old. As you can see, I'm, I'm glad I found some brick tie. Really, I would have liked to have seen them every three courses. So probably some at the top too. You want to hold those brick in. But this is not the way you want to do it. You shouldn't be able to do this to a brick tie. They should be into studs, because that's what's holding your brick into the house. It's not going to hold into OSB, so basically it's not doing anything. If this wall wanted to go, those nails would have came with it. Nothing would have stopped it. No certified roofer did this job. Even if you read the package and the instructions, uh, you could have done a better job. No argument. On the other side, they've got a steel valley. On this side of the dormer, they've attempted to do a closed valley. <laughs> It comes down, rains in there, gets right underneath it, but I guess it's okay because there's a valley, right? Water coming down there is going to hit them tips and travel across. It will travel right along when it comes past the valley. It's going to hit that tip and travel right along, and then we'll come in here. Everything's garbage here. It's all supposed to be individually screwed. That's how the manufacturer wants it. Uh, what they did here is they just uh, put up the soffit, put up the fascia, nailed the crap out of the fascia, but if you pull this away, it all falls out. The guttering is not seamless. It's all joined in 10 foot lengths, but they didn't bother to caulk it. There's no caulking on any of the seams. There's no caulking on any of the end caps. There is no caulking on any of the outlets. So virtually everything's going to leak in this one length of froth, it would leak from one, two, three, four, seven spots. Pretty pathetic. This is just like, it's like sand. Total sand. Look at that. It's just unbelievable. Look at this. No brick pipes, nothing. Nothing. How do you get away with that? This is just ridiculous. I'm frustrated. You're damn right I'm frustrated. Why am I frustrated? Because i got to come fix this crap. I've got to beg, borrow, and steal from everyone out there to help me help the homeowners. That's why I'm pissed off. Man, I need some help. Oh, look at it. we got electrical lines in the back of this. That's just brilliant. But he still gets away with it. Because no matter what, he's not going to pay for this. No matter what, even if the homeowners go after him, which they don't have a penny for a lawyer to go after him. I need some help. I need some people to step forward with me and say, hey, we're not going to take this anymore. This is, shouldn't be allowed. we got to make some laws that say, you can't do this. Look at this crap. I can't believe this. When is it enough? When does it stop? Is it going to be 10 years from now? Is it going to be 20 years from now? How long are we going to keep doing this where innocent people are being screwed? Look at the freaking rot in this corner. Look at this. We've got mold on the outside of this. Until there's some kind of law that says, hey, you're going to go to jail. You're going to go to jail. If you, if you affect this family so bad and you've done something wrong, you go to jail. How do you build houses like this? I mean, I think he truly believes he's building it and he's building a good home. Why? I mean, the evidence is there. He hires his own engineer to come in because he doesn't believe us. So he must think he knows what he's doing. Look at that. This was an old porch. No brick ties again. Just cover it up, right? Talk about cover up day in, day out. Is there anybody going around going, hey, you got your license on you? Imagine that. I can easily remove a wonderful, heavy stone wall with a crowbar. Nice and easy. Is anyone going around saying, hey, do you know what the hell you're doing? No. I'm heaving and breaking my butt all day, fixing crap after crap. And this guy continues. I'm out of here. Do you really get what you give? I believe it. What goes around comes around is one day he's going to trip in his own pile of crap. That's what he's going to do. And then he's going to bang his Who's going to pay to help them in court? 
fight this guy that thinks he has the right to ruin their lives. Thinks he has the right to kick them out on the street like they're dogs. So here's where we're at. The job itself was a total of a $200,000 contract. Unfortunately, they paid $219,005 for the crap that we all looked at. The lien, total amount of the lien is $343,800 and change. You look at that with 219 at 343, we're up in the 543,000, and all I know is it's a one hell of a lot of money for something that had to come down. We'll start by pushing off all the sheeting. New skylight. After that, we'll start removing the trusses right across the back to the front of the house. Then we just start folding the walls in, and that way we keep everything folding in towards the house, nothing out against the two houses beside us here. Bit by bit, we'll get down to the existing bungalow, bring in a tractor, pull it forward. It's a shame, really. We can't uh, reuse the trusses. Everyone out there in the market says we need an engineer stamp, they need to inspect them. I'm going to keep these guys because I'm going to big shed at home. These will be perfect. I'll reuse these. We're going to cut these up and reuse them for something else. I hate wasting wood, but they're not going to the dump. Second floor is down. Just for safety's sakes, we're not going to mess with this. We're just going to push it off, allow it to hit the floor. We're going to pick it up and carry it out of the way. I'm just going to move this wall out of the way because we're going to roll this beam off and pick it up by hand. All right, that's down. That was really easy. I like it easy. <laughs> Nothing was holding it. It's just sitting on that part there and this part here, and then everything was bricked around it. That's so if you think about it, the brick was locking it in. There's no real... Nobody tied it in, and it shouldn't have tied in. That definitely should have been welded in place, and it's required by code. This probably weighs about 800 pounds, but when it hits that floor, it's going to sound like about 10 tons. <laughs> That's a heavy freaking sledge. I love it. See that? Oh my God. That's freaking brilliant. I just knocked off the upper and it was tied into the beam. And if anything, that's what was holding it. Gotta love it. You want underneath it now? No. We are here. Never. Did you be able to take apart stairs and landing in 60 seconds? Never. Not in my world. After this house, there'll be no, no surprises for me ever again. And it'll be a good thing to take it down. So we had brick directly on that wall right there? Yeah, there was a lintel there, but not on this side. With the brick was sitting right on that piece of wood. There was a whole lot of guesswork done here, wasn't there? There was. We're waiting now to hear back. They haven't pulled back is the issue. Yeah. So it's still a holding lien. They're still pushing towards the court date because they haven't announced, they haven't advised us that they're, they want to settle or that they have decided to back off and let bygones be bygones or whatever. Every single day we find something. Every day, look at this. This used to be the old door into the house. We can see the milk box that had no insulation whatsoever. As a matter of fact, it had some paperwork in there. How do you do that? No insulation, okay? Worse, worse than that, this was the old door. It did go down further, so you can see that they bricked up. Well, what's holding all the cinder block here? This requires a steel lintel, okay, that is going to be as wide as this block, six inches on each side. But what do I see? One piece of rebar. Only one. So let's put in the block like this, close it off, put in a window, and a small piece of rebar holding this. It's nowhere near minimum code, nothing. And you know what? I don't even like minimal code. This is not even close to minimum code. Not to mention the door jams upside down. 
This is to help hold the door. <laughs> Man, that's a toy. Corner of the house, you're gonna come up. That way, you have access to see the beams. Okay. Take these beams down. We're gonna play them off to the side. Take that floor off. Stick it into the basement. We'll start filling off that 40. Okay. And then uh, once all the garbage is removed, we're going to uh, fill it up concrete. I'm gonna have dump trucks coming in later on this afternoon. Nice. Maybe all I right. get to drive that for a minute or something. Sure. If you would like to. Oh. <laughs> There's a way to open up the floor. Just push it in. I just want to drive it. Awesome. I had a little gulp, but now I'm okay. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited. It's being euthanized. Yeah. We needed to put it out of its misery. It's true. <laughs> it's helping. You gotta love it. One out, one back in. No, oh, sir, is he picking this up? He's going to drop it, and in it goes. He's waiting for him. We're going to have a more shallow vent for the concrete because it's really heavy. The wood is, is a lot lighter. It's never compact tight like the concrete or the earth. By this time tomorrow, this will be a hole in the ground. Thursday, we'll be getting ready for the footings. It, it's been the most surreal experience. I, I Every time as we talk through this story... I think about one more thing and one more thing and one more, like there was so much that happened and yet we kept giving him the benefit of the doubt. I know. The friendship. I really, the I really put a lot on that friendship. Friendship. Nice to see you again, my dear. Joe, I like. We have really good memories of being in that house. It's, you know, we did what we it could. It offsets with it. the bad memories right yeah. now. But that's all we have now. It's yeah. just the memories of it. Some pictures. Yeah. My heart is racing. I don't know how we're ever going to begin to repay everybody Mike and everybody that's helped us. in this project. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what it means. Isn't that nice not to see anything to do with it, to be honest with you? Yeah. Okay. Yes or no? That monstrosity. It is, it is, it is. I just, it's, it is. But it's gone, and, uh... Oh, a memento of my floor tile. We lived here for a long time, and I liked that little bungalow. <laughs> we just wanted a little more space, and, uh, you know, we were doing it, I thought, with some good thinking. So. Seeing it gone now? It feels really good. I feel, a, I feel a lot better. <laughs> yeah, too many memories in I it. I hated looking at it. Yeah. Just hated it. I hated what I saw and what he'd built. I... It's a hole in the ground. <laughs> I, I own a hole in the ground. Or we own. So... And this court case is not going away. So when that's away, I can really enjoy this. Christina and Joe decided to put an addition on their home. Hired a contractor, $200,000 contract. 10 months into the project, we have a hole in the ground. So let's step back a bit. What did we do? We brought in an engineer. The engineer does an initial scout throughout the property, sees a ton of problems, uh, gets to the point where we should investigate more. So we damn near got the whole house. To really take a good look at what's right, what's wrong. I know it's all wrong. 
He comes up with a great report. We've got a lot of problems in this house. No footings, no insulation in not all the areas, in most of the areas. Vapor barrier missing in most of the areas. Uh, steel lintel issues on top of sheeting and not structure. On and on and on. Okay, we bring in a cost consultant. Their job is to come in and estimate how much in value of the work that is done. How much is it going to cost to fix it? So we're talking large money here. We're talking over 300000 in the long run, he estimates, to fix the job. Then the contractor wants his own engineer. So his own engineer steps in and they start taking the place apart, digging holes under footings to prove there's no footings, digging the holes under the front of the house, the back of the house. They find even more wrong because we gave up. It's like we know this place has got to come down. But this is his engineer. Ten months in, the lien's still there. $343,800 in change is still there. The fight is still going. All right, let's be serious. If I'm going to build a house and I'm going to design a house that's better than anything else, we're going to make it green. It's going to be fireproof, waterproof, moldproof. Let's think about it. Let's have a, a green roof. Let's make this home so efficient. It stands for itself. Spend your money right, and last forever. They, uh, they had to shorten the house by about four feet. There wasn't a problem with the coverage or the square footage. The problem was with the zoning requirement for the uh, length in the house. There's a maximum length you're allowed to go. Well, you said we're going to lose about a foot in the bedroom here. We're losing maybe a foot in the ensuite. I think the garage is going to stay the same, but they're going to lose a, probably two feet in this uh, the stairway width here. I guess all in all, yeah, yeah. I'm going to save just a little bit of money. Yeah, <laughs> a fair bit of concrete. And <laughs> but you know what? This is a prototype. I think we're going to run into a lot of issues here that uh, as we're building, this is a totally different home. This is not going to be like just rocket science and throwing it up. It's going to be a huge challenge. Oh, here's our form boards. All in one, no wood. Don't have to take it out. Interior, exterior, weeping system, drainage. I don't know why nobody uses it. We strongly believe in it. It'll do a better job. Everything can be used. Every little piece of it can be uh, cut up and used and coupled together. It's lightweight, easy for the guys to handle. Interior, exterior, weeping system. Exactly. You get a double weeping system. Where where else do you get that? No one you don't. That. And who wants to put it in the inside? Who was going to say, oh, that's going to cost you money? This is in the form. This makes it work. All the rebars here today. We're going to take uh, all this off with the Bobcat. We'll get a set of drawings. It'll go to our estimating department. We'll find out the quantities, the exact weight of what is going to go into this whole project. And then we have a shop which actually details, cuts, fabricates, does all the bar bends, bundles it up on the truck, it goes off the site. This is heavy-duty gauge when it comes to rebar. This is commercial grade. But let's remember something. We're building a concrete home here. That's a massive weight load. As soon as it's a concrete home, that now compares to industrial or commercial. So that weight load must be justified. Is it too much? Nothing to do with this house's minimum code requirement. Everything to do with it is on the maximum level. I'm trying to build a home that's ten times better with theory of understanding why. Why are we building it ten times better? So you never have to spend money in the future. Talk about a hellhole. This is a hellhole. We're about three weeks to four weeks late on the footings. We've had tremendous amounts of rain. Not all day, just that once. Two hours straight rainfall. Now that this is washed sand back in, we got to dig this back out. It's supposed to be uh, at least 16 inches deep. We're going to begin there with a garden shovel, digging it out, okay, to undisturb soil once again. Day in, day out, that's the way this has been. We were supposed to pour two weeks ago. We were supposed to pour last week. We were supposed to pour today. It downfall this morning, and we're cleaning it up again. This is the foundation of everything we're building in this house. If this is not perfect, everything afterwards will not be perfect. This must be perfect. Once this is perfect, form set in place, this flies up, and away we go. I didn't say it was going to be easy, but this is the most important part. And right now, Mother Nature is tempting my frickin' patience.
It's a definite big day. We got about 30 meters of concrete coming. The idea is to work from that way back this way. So when the boom truck comes in, we'll set up for the concrete. It'll boom right over and catch the back as we're continuing to work forward. It's just this, just a split up and everybody keep moving. All right, let's do this. I need some water. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh. That's a whole lot of concrete on a very hot day. Yeah, two guys lying down over there. Both my son and Adam are out. Too much sun. You got to be in and out. You can't stay in it all day. It will knock you down. And you learn quickly. When someone stops sweating, get them out of there. Well, it's a lot cleaner today. We've taken down the trees, moved the fence back, which gives us a ton more room because we have about, uh, how many skids of? We have 16 skids of four by four paneling coming. Two by four forms. Yes. And each skid is 2,000 pounds? 2,000 pounds. Oh, I'm good. I'm no. They're very heavy, very heavy. It's actually not that bad, but it's when you've done so many of them, it starts catching up to you. The idea of everything we're doing here for vertical rebar, inside and outside coming straight up, and then not only vertical, but horizontal locking, it locks it down to the footings, it locks it into the first floor, it locks it into the second floor, everything is locked together. is your ties. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. And then your nail. Then you align. That's the last kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, so we... You better be learning. That's all I can do. <laughs> I swear I am. Okay. I swear. Now, we've stopped everybody because I understand there's something you would like to do before we continue. Small thing, but big in our minds, yes. Uh, the priest from the Greek Orthodox Church, where we go, he sort of blessed the site and uh, blessed the people that are going to work on it and blessed the family and sort of just, uh, it was a spiritual thing. It was um, just something that we felt we needed to do. It's a very common thing. Normally you do it when the foundation is poured. So the priest suggested or asked if we could come back once the foundation was poured and normally you, uh, you bless the four sort of parameters of the foundation of the house okay with um holy water okay wait i just want to scout it out for a second <laughs> oh my god they brought the lien down or the claim down to sixty seven thousand dollars so they've asked for um our response to that and they've been making some very what we feel um unrealistic requests demands or requests so we're still trying to negotiate it out it wasn't the financial cost it's about the mental health and um, you know it's thin I, I can't lie I, I have to be very clinical when we talk about it because when I stop to think about it it's really making us crazy we know we don't want to give him any money bottom line but we're so exhausted at this point. It's like, just just go away and let us just enjoy what this is. And we can't do that with that no. over our heads. But at this point, we're resigned to just wait it out and, you know. See where it goes. Looks like a building, doesn't it? Sure it does. Look at the rebar. Well, we're almost ready. We've got uh, the plumbers in today. We're going to be digging this hole. We're backfilling the uh, other area. 
the Bowen brothers doing the foundation coating, so completing that up so we can really get the backfill so that we're, you know, not undermining or worrying about the house next door. So far, so good. There hasn't been any issues. We've had a lot of rain in the last two months. As we look at the layout here, we can see where the garage is, and we're backfilling that now. We've tamped it every foot. We put the tamper in through it, and the idea really is to let that settle back to a really solid base. We can see that the steel beam will go right through the center across here, holding the pre cast flooring which is almost the next move we have the uh, concrete truck coming in in floor heating's in place we want to pour uh, agilia it's self leveling a little messy but it's good stuff You gotta love this. How come this is not a regular concrete used? You don't have to vibrate it. it I, it's self-leveling. Yes. I mean, it's easily trowing. So economically, I'm gonna look at this and say, I'm gonna save time using this product. The same MBA or better. Is this actually stronger? It's actually better in both strength and durability. Well, it makes sense to me. How much money is it over standard concrete? Over standard concrete, if you consider all the costs that are implicated, time, labor, quality of concrete, it's cheaper than using normal concrete. Let's make sure we have chairs on hand to uh, pick up any area that has been too much stepped on. What the chairs are, you can see them right here. The chairs will hold up the mesh, keeping the mesh centered with the concrete, and that's the idea. We're just approximately below center so that the in-floor heating is directly in the center of the concrete. We want even distribution of heat. We have an expansion joint all the way around. You saw the guys firing it in. It's the black stuff here. And what this does is two purposes. One, not only does it allow movement without breaking the floor, but it keeps the floor separate away from the wall. Very smart. That's why we don't have cracking. You see how it doesn't mix with the water? It just pushes it aside? Yeah. I love that. I think this is kid stuff. Oh my God. I think we can teach the young how to do this. No more big trowels. Unbelievable. Look at that. Instant floor. They did a lot of pre notching. Anything else will go up and over, and if they got a cut for a round rebar, they will, so they'll just do quick notches, slip it all in place. Man, I love it. We want to see this go up. You know, it's really, it gets frustrating after a while. Just come in here every day, and there's nothing we can do until, you know, until we get to certain steps. And uh, to see this floor finally come in, it just means that now we can go right ahead and blast this thing off and get these people home, finally. The outside wall, we're going to try and bend those in. We're going to bend all those 10M bars. You see them on a 45. We're going to cut and bend all those. I love pros. Looks like a cow pile. <laughs> what did you do? It wasn't me. <laughs> right now they're filling in all the joints of the flooring. If you notice, they have a cross membrane. We can see it right here. In each and every spot we see like this, we have a tie over from floor to floor as they fill it and then fill in between. What it's doing is almost like bracing a standard uh, wood structured floor, even though this is 10 times stronger. But it's keeping it from doing this keeping it uniform. Now it ties it all in. Gotta love this. I'm just... <sighs> right, as you turn it, all the ideas coming out of my head. Oh, so, is that how that it's, works? It's, it's all about creativity, you know? So. <laughs> Everything just flows Just properly, flows, right? yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll turn it on because we need it. <laughs> We're in the middle of January and we're about to pour the first uh, first floor. Get this floor done, we get our core slab on, we can start the second floor and close this place in and get some inside work would be nice for uh, you know the last uh, little bit of the cold months here. How bad are we 
you talking about down there? Better, well, all the rest is good, eh? It's just this one here. Can you see the way the court slots come to the Yeah. Place? We are now in the basement of the house, and uh, all the concrete burst, and it's all coming out now. So it's a huge cleanup ahead of us. What we had, it found a small hole in the flooring itself, in the core slab. It followed the hole, started filling up the basement. That was our first problem. We plugged that hole, started filling it up again. It actually blew out a piece of wood on the other side. It popped the nail. So now we've had a blowout there. We're going to let that set up a bit. That should plug any holes that we've had problems with. It's not going to harden. It'll just set enough that it's going to plug those holes. You know, we had a rough start. It's taken us all day. It probably should have taken us about a half day. We've got it done. That's all I care about. It's coming to the end of the day. Perfect timing. The sun's setting. We're traveling off the last inch. We're ready to go home. We're going to do a little bit of a cleanup in the basement. Looks like a cleanup in aisle four down there. So uh, we're going to get the guys down there, clean it up, call it a day. If you were to ask me, would I expect to be doing this in the winter? The answer is no. I expect it to be done, honestly, last year. We're into February right now, and it's freezing cold. Just a little. I got the muffs on. I got everything else on. I got the thermals on. I'm doing good. Do you want to do this in the winter? No. Do you want to do concrete in the winter? No. Do I got to pull out heaters to heat the concrete? Yes. Is it more work, more time? Yes. More money? Yes. You just ignore it. Pretend you're somewhere south and go. So let's go. It's spring. It's April. It's been a long run, actually a really long run. Concrete looks good. We're in there now trying to pull out the rest of the forms on the bottom, clean up, sweep up, make it safe. We've got the welders in, doing all the welding right now to get the steel beams in place, to get the core slab roof in place. We're almost there. It's close. Well, in order to look directly at it, I need to protect my eyes. This way I can see what he's doing. Where are you, man? Well, there you are. It is such a huge project. You got to think of all the engineers, all the architects, all the building inspections, all the forming, all the work that it takes to do this. Like I said, it's a prototype, and to build a prototype is going to be a lot of money, a lot of time. More than I want, yes. But we've got drawings galore. Look at these papers that just came in, and this is all for the steel. All the steel structure that's going across the top. This is not architectural for the framing of the house itself, just steel. Effort, huge. Thoughts, mega. I mean, look at this. This is these custom beams that I talk about that come right over the house. Look at the size of these guys. I will always say that it was worth doing what we do. Every once in a while, I wake up going, oh, my God, I'm still here. Oh, my God, this is just getting out of hand. But it's not. It's for a reason. One, we're helping a family. Two, we're making a statement. Let's build a home that won't burn. Let's build a home that will not mold. Let's build a home that has nothing but clean air in the house. And let's bring them back. are being hung off of the steel structure, and so uh, we've got uh, three different uh, beams. One goes down to the front in the middle portion here. We have another one that comes and curves down and sits on the back concrete down at the bottom over there. And then we have another one that comes from the other end over there, which is on uh, some steel down below.
have some glue lamps coming in. This is the basic structure for our roof. Just trying to line it up with the bottom, which is, uh, you know, a little bit difficult task. This is a heavy weight load we got here. Just trying to keep it from twisting and try to keep it in place at the same time. Not so easy. It's, uh, I'm just glad we're not lifting these in. We got a crane here today. Slab guys coming in to drill. Okay. We need to start marking. Start marking? Yeah, that way they can drill everything you gotta do. So if I can just get you guys on setting it up, marking, they'll come in, they'll drill it, and then we can start running. Okay, what we'll do is we'll mark system A first. We've gone the extra mile. This is the Becca Tech with radium floor heating. Because we're using a hollow floor slab, uh, we wanted to uh, control the heat and make sure that we're, all of our heat is rising and, and going up into the spaces as intended, as opposed to losing some of the heat in the slab and, and bringing it down. It's very easy to lay down. It's just a loose lay, and so uh, it gives you an easy uh, feel to, to route all your tubing through. So the tubing app install went very quickly. They were able to just route it through the pucks, and then the, the pucks allow the, uh, the topping, the concrete topping, to flow in between the pucks that gives it extra strength by and, going in and out and we use what is it two thirds less that's correct you, you, you need just a minimal coverage over the top of the puck so you use a lot less concrete topping it helps us with crack control and it also gives us the benefit of no uh, no heat transmission through the floors Dara Top needs time to cure, and we don't want it to cure that fast as organic chips and products. Okay. 96% of the water in the mixture are used for the crystallization of the binder. So only 4% of the water are leaving exactly the, the product. Wow. The rest is staying in the product. That's why it doesn't crack. And this is why there's no shrinkage and no curling. Brilliant. The Dara Top is available now in more than 50 colors. So we are able to color the whole product. And what you can use then is just a clear epoxy polyurethane coat on top, done. We're gonna put in a big cistern tank with plumbing all the way around the side of the house that goes up to the roof line. So when the flat roof is up there, not only do they get to enjoy a livable space, we're gonna collect the rainwater. It's gonna come all the way down to here with a pump system very unique system. You take that pump, you water the grass, you water your plants up on the roof. It's the way it should be. Did we really need to put an elevator in the house? The answer is yes. The design is to make sure that you can be born in the house and die in the house. Build a home that lasts forever. Unfortunately, Joe, one day, will be in a wheelchair. We saw the x-rays. It's a necessity as far as I'm concerned. There's the button right there. This 
been raining for the last two weeks. We have been fighting it, tarping, trying to get the roofing done, trying to frame, drywall, get this place closed in, spray foam. Mother Nature decides to change her mind and get really cold. Snow comes yesterday. The street is filled with ice. It's unbelievable. We're going to have to hold off on the driveway. Fine. It's too cold. Go figure. Like today's Friday. Monday, it's going to be 6, 10 degrees. It's going to be great for us, which I need to do the spray foam. And it's got to be above zero. So we're lucky there. This channel that we're putting up on the side of the house first goes up the horizontal. Then we'll spray foam within that zone. That's creating our thermal break that we're looking for that ties in up over the parapets back in over the house. Remember that cooler I keep talking about, turning it upside down, having that thermal break also on the bottom, a complete cooler. From here, once the spray foam's done, we're going to go vertical. Vertical with metal, which will tie into the horizontal, and then we'll put the panel boards over top of that. That creates what we're looking for, that concrete look. The gas guys are coming today. They're going to be digging up across the street. They're going to hook that gas back up. We'll have the meter on the outside of the house. What I want more than anything is to get this place done on the outside, get that heat going. I don't care if i got to plastic up the windows. Gotta love it. It's coming. It's looking good. Look at the elevator. We're getting ready to go. We have the safety closing off so no one can fall in. Soon I'll be able to get in there, push the button, go up and down. I'm not lazy, though. I'll take the stairs. Look at this, guys. You guys are incredible. All right. Look at this. Electrical. Heating. What the hell is that? <laughs> that is unbelievable. So tell that's, me about that's, this. That's, this is part one. The part two is over in the corner there. <laughs> Look at this. The white representing the gray water, the red representing the hot, the blue representing the cold. Yeah. This, uh, this manifold is for uh, my domestic water supply. The key feature is, is the fact that each line has, is dedicated to, uh, to a separate location, to a separate fixture. They do not have any elbows, they do not have any T, so they, they run straight independently to each, uh, to each point, each location. Um, that way we don't reduce the flow rate, we don't reduce the, the, the we don't impact the pressure, um, and we're just creating the ideal scenario. This is uh, for preheat of our domestic hot water. It allows us to save energy on uh, the domestic hot water load and to reduce our uh, instant gas-fired uh, domestic hot water tank. Okay. Yeah. Should provide about 50 to 65% of your, uh, your hot water during the course of the year. We're facing due south in this particular uh, situation. Uh, this has good exposure. Uh, we did uh, double check and uh, do some solar studies to make sure that our middle portion of roof does not create any shading on it. Uh, even in winter, we found we're getting good solar exposure on this location. We're going to see the panels from down below. And, and, and that's something we talked about before. And, and uh, but it's on the back of the house. It's on the it's back the of, the of the house. house. You know, the, the real thing we have backing us is a, a school. So in some ways, you know, we thought that was actually a good idea. You know, it's educational for the kids. Right. They'll ask, you know, what is that? What does it do? It'll benefit, you know, both the, the kids in the back. And, and it's discreetly located and, and gives us a lot of energy efficiency. So we just spray, spray, spray. Spray, seamless. spray, spray. It's seamless, yeah. And um, what if it dries? You can spray over it you again? You can spray over it again. It's totally self, self-curing. self It's a it's a total adhesive. Because it's uh, rubber, it's it's very, very flexible. Uh, it will actually uh, stretch up to 18 per, 1,800%. 1,800%. With 90% recovery. It's a two-part system. There's a part A, which is the liquid rubber. And then there's the part B, which is a, a calcium chloride and water mixture and what that the part B is is a catalyst to actually set instantly set that, that rubber there will be an entirely seamless one piece sort of uh, liner that's fully adhered but can f- like fully move with the structure if there is any movement What are we getting with four panels and the equivalent to wattage? With four panels, you're getting a total of 600 potential watts per hour. Okay, 600 watts per hour. We have how many batteries downstairs? Downstairs, we've got 10,000 watts worth of battery storage. 10,000 watts. Okay, now you got me here. 600 watts Yep. going into possible 10,000 watts? Yes. How do we do this? Think of it in terms of a gas tank. Okay. Your fuel tank in the basement are the batteries that will hold 10,000 watts. 
This will put in 600 watts every hour. Depending on what you're running, typically in a 24 hour period, the average house will use between 25 and 35,000 watts running everything. That's, that's over the course of the entire day. Mm. The battery system in the basement is designed so that when the power fails in the area, that 10,000 watts goes to powering the essential loads. So the things in the house that you really want to keep running. Fridges, freezers, lights. Sump pumps, elevators. As the panels produce power, if the power is needed in the home, it's used. If it isn't needed, it automatically gets sent back out to the utility, creating a credit on the electrical bill. We're going to be doing this? We're going to be doing this. That's exactly what I wanted. So we have one fancy roof system going in this home, well, at least over the dome, correct? That's right. The benefits of this is that we're going to put down a breathable paper. Underlayment. Okay, then we're building it up for airflow underneath. That's right. Okay, and on top of that, we have a special foil that will reflect hot and cold. 97%. 97 percent. That's right. It reflects the cold. That's right. And the heat. And the heat. And the summer heat. No ice buildup. That's right. None and whatsoever. We put a guarantee to And that. you guarantee that. That's right. We're putting in a green roof, we're getting everything ready here, the insulation's down, we're putting the edging for the green roof down, and the modules will be coming up uh, by crane. We have a one by two foot module, it's pre-grown with sedums. By the time we're finished, we'll have a full grown, finished green roof up here. That's good, right there. A green roof is um, plant material that's being specifically selected to grow up on a, on a roof. It's one of the solutions uh, for the future in regards to summer energy consumption so the plants absorb water and transpire it and in the process cool the uh, the area around it and uh, it's also one of the possible yeah. solutions to alleviate uh, some of the stormwater problems that the cities are encountering with the size of the uh, the stormwater pipes being insufficient uh, for all the new development The Durog Bear Coat is an air and moisture barrier. Okay, so it, it uh, protects against air and moisture. So instead of putting up a Tyvek or a Tyvek right. bar, we're right. having a rain barrier. That's right, yes. Okay, so we're going to put about, what, five and a half inches of the white foam? Yeah, we're going to use five and a half inches to uh, achieve the 19 plus R value. Now, Bear Coat, uh, do we have to worry about temperature? I know we tarped it up, we got yes. the heater going. Yes. We're tarp, everything's sealed, we're tarped, we've got the heater going, so we want to maintain, we like to maintain a five degree at least to try to keep the... Five degrees? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now minus. Well, this, this more for the finished coat. Uh, this particular material is a little bit less than that, but we'd like to maintain five degrees if we can. It really uh, defines the spray foam, as far as I'm concerned, because we're interfacing with your beadboard, your stucco on the outside. We've got other uh, the roof insulation. You've got your insulation on your reverse roof. Okay, we're tying it all together, and that's the flexibility of the spray foam. And it's it's nice to come to a project where you know where you see all the attributes of the spray foam. I mean, we're tying into every system here. We work with steel studs. We've got some wood studs going. We got the core slab. We got concrete walls with girts. We're insulating the superstructure on the outside. The concrete, and that's a beauty. That's I, I love doing that because you're insulating on the, the right side. Correct. The, the outside. The outside. It's always the best because you're insulating the whole structure. Therefore, it, none of it's prone to getting frozen. 100%. My own house, my own garage. Everything I do, I do from the outside. Everything. I just push and hold the buttons away we go yep one's down and four's up earlier i was pushing a spot on the wall and it wasn't working so let's just see what happens here <laughs> so you 
you know. This is awesome. Look at how smooth that is. Yeah, I guess that's the whole point is that right now you're setting all the floors in the jam at this point. Yeah. Get the doors on, get our little locks on the doors. So when it's at that floor, you can't open the door. I like it. I like it. <laughs> backup power for the house when the power goes down so the line that i'm connecting now is the line that's going over to the sub panel when there is no power like we're going to power up the fridge uh we're going to power up the in-floor heat so in the winter even though the power is out they have no furnace they'll still be able to use the in-floor heat and give them some heat uh give them a couple of lighting circuits throughout the house so they can see if it's at night and a few plugs taking up this whole street i mean right to the end and then the side and then everything else i think we're parked outside on the main street and we're in neighbors driveways they're being very good to us they know we're about finishing so they're being kind to say hurry up mike get the hell out but we have everybody in here today fence guys the driveway's being done asphalt guys are just getting the end of the asphalt in we'll have all the earth put in place today shrubbery at the ends we got to get the walkway in we're working on the inside Everyone you can think of is here today, and I mean everyone, electricians, plumbers, painters, us, fencing guys, roof guys, flashing guys, caulking guys, and a few girls. That's how they used to do it years ago. <laughs> homes generally uh, you'll have concrete drywall any wood that needs to be sealed trim so as long as you're using the right products for the job preparing the concrete properly preparing the drywall properly and the wood so you know everything gets its right product which Mike is great with that's the only challenge with a home like this so it's just time there's been a big time pressure on this job we're, we're doing our best I think we're there some hard to reach places the scaffold is really nice here now we uh, we're gonna throw up some ladders soon just to make sure all the the little uh, nooks and crannies are uh, taken care of. So uh, it's a it's an interesting place. I really like it. And this is the impressive part, not the wiring. That. Now, these are actually from Australia. Yes, they're made in Australia. Down under. Down under. So this unit gives uh, 10,000 BTUs. Just under 10,000 BTUs. Very impressive. It's a UL approved unit. So it's a two and a half liter unit at full open, giving off just under 10,000 BTUs. It'll last about four hours. And we really do want to anchor this to the floor for safety. Yes, you do. All right. There you go. Seven thirty. One hour, two hours, three hours. That's ten thirty. This is going to be twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock. I'll be taking them through the house. The neighbors are really going to hate me.
good. I was hoping that uh, I could bring them in before 12 o'clock at night. I had a bad feeling. I said 10, 12 o'clock. And I had a bad feeling. And sure enough, you know what takes what it takes. It's not like I'm just going to say, everybody, drop your tools. We're going to go. And we're going to... 30, 40 guys were in here until that time. Go, 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 clean. It stopped. The lights went up. It looked good. Let's bring them back in. Long time, man. Year and a half. Three years for them. I think they're going to love it. Over three years they've been out of their house. Three and a half years. Imagine being out of your house for that long. Could you have any idea what that can do to you? <laughs> Come on. So excited. Wow. Well, Follow me. Oh, my. Jump. And just hold me. <laughs> hey. How you doing? Um, I think I'm pretty good. We're uh, just a little excited today, maybe? Mm -hmm. Understatement. Well, what we can do is just take a little walk up here and, and stand and look at it for a minute because I kind of like the idea of standing here and looking at it, not rushing into this. It's, uh... it's absolutely gorgeous. A little stunning, isn't it? It's so beautiful. How many companies are involved in this project? Over a hundred companies. <laughs> I can't. I can't believe this. I lost count of them. Oh. Mans, men people, how many people have been in here? But over 100 companies. Probably 200 men, women, worked on this job. We have a lot of foam and stucco, not too much. We have a concrete board decoration on the side with the uh, cherry look in the front. We need to look at everything from footings. Never mind taking the house down and the people we brought in to help us take it down, the tractors and, and you know, the hydro company coming in to protect us and cover up the wires and from footings, foundation, concrete, form guys, carpenters, steel guys, plumbing, electrical, beyond anything I've ever seen. After you. Oh my gosh. I'm giving the house back. Oh, the house. wow. It's ours again. It doesn't look like our house, that's for sure. I you don't sure think this so. is the right house? Wow. It's so far, so good, eh? No. <laughs> you had us at the front Before? curve. <laughs> yeah. So far, so good. At the end of it, I need to thank the world. I need to thank every single person that stepped forward. Those who worked for free, even those who charged. Well, look at the shirts. What does it say? There's no, no place, place like, like homes. Like homes. <laughs> I love it. There's no place like homes. Said, this looks really good, but beneath it is a hundred times better than what it looks like. It's that's what this house is about. There are so many ways we can go, but let's go this way. I like that way. That's yeah. a good way to go. This is the dining room. This is the part that I really love. Oh my god. Give me a couple of the big ceiling plants. This is the one I want to lay down on. Look at this ceiling. Definitely designed for the windows to give all the light we can get, but not too much. If we did all windows on the south, it would be overwhelming in the summer. Oh, look at this counter. It's uh, it's a quartz counter, oh totally blended in. It's absolutely stunning. I love these colors. This is your kitchen. Take a look at your kitchen. Look your at this dishwasher, fridge. your fridge. Oh, my God. I'm blown <laughs> away. I just need to sit for a second. It's beautiful. It's not going to burn down. It's not going to fall down. It's not going to blow down. It's not going to have issues. This house will be here far longer than my lifespan. Your new beautiful black wrought iron fence. Oh, look at this beautiful. Oh, I bet my neighbor loves oh, that. Michael, like that. Yeah. That's what we should be building. Better homes. Better structure. We're thinking green. We're thinking environmental. Well, let's really think it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hold off on the basement and we're going to call the elevator. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to just like wait patiently. Wow. It's not going to burn. That's a really good one. I like that idea. My house is not going to burn down. Hmm, that's a good idea. There's no sprinklers in here, but it won't burn. Oh, my God. <laughs> Step into the soundproof booth. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of comfortable. It is. It's not going to mold. Why is it not going to mold? Because we've thermal broken the house. We're stopping the hot from meeting cold. Yeah, we got a telephone so you can call someone while you're <laughs> Honey, I'm stuck in the elevator. We have a green roof. That means we have a livable surface. You can grow vegetables, anything you want. We have everything in this home. I'm so neat. <laughs> Let's 
do that again. <laughs> in the elevator. This is research and development. That's what it is. You design a prototype that's totally different that no one's ever built. And put all the theories in together into one basket. All of them. It's not like we just picked one. You know, let's do a green roof. Oh, no, 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 no. We did solar assist in heat, solar assist in hydro. In your bedroom. A fireplace. Oh, that actually is a fireplace that does not need to be ducted. It runs on equal haul and not alcohol. I love that. The learning curves have been painful, but great, positive. Love it. We can do this again. We can do it even better. Vaulted ceiling. And another bathroom. This is gorgeous. Wow. I call this bathroom. You call this one? Is this yours? Yeah, I call it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I could visualize the layout of the rooms, but that was about it. As far as how it was yeah, going to look. Kitchen back yeah. here, bedrooms upstairs. No. But what they were going to look like. And, <laughs> and the cabinetry. The cabinetry. And, and, wow. Well, let's take the elevator. Elevator? Good. Okay. Now, these four solar panels on the right are your backup electricity that has all the important things that you need up to 10,000 watts of power by solar that's run through a battery system. It is state of the art that you will be enjoying still watching your TV while everyone else is looking in envy at you because why do you have power and they don't? <laughs> The, the two panels on the left are a solar assist to all the heating in your house. They will constantly take that energy from the sun, heating the water on its own, and the tankless system that we have downstairs that I'll show you, you will not believe the sophisticated <laughs> look of what is down there. Definitely worth waiting for. It's been a long time. Yeah, well, uh, oh, the part well, I would well, miss. The beginning part we This part we would come back for for sure this is just beyond our wildest imagination i think now you heard the story about a green roof yes mm -hmm. well everybody hears a green roof but especially that one the stone all the way around with the parapet that really people cannot see when you're out there wait to see this growing but it's a slow grower it's not going to grow this wild on you it's like... going to stay short Love it. You've got a roof system yeah. here, like you won't believe. Seamless membranes throughout the whole roof. <laughs> Layers of uh, not only protection board, but rigid foam on top of that. By the way, we collect all your rainwater, yeah. which goes into a huge cistern tank on your That's front fantastic. lawn. It flushes your toilets, does your laundry, and waters your grass. I don't know what to say. It's amazing. You don't really think about living in a space like this because it wasn't our reality. It wasn't, you know, what we would have envisioned. You'd see it in a magazine, they'd say, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool, but it would not be something that you'd envision that you'd be able to live in. So it's it's pretty amazing. So we've pretty well seen everything except for the basement. Oh, my laundry room. Yeah, you got a washer and dryer and a laundry tub. and We didn't even bother finishing with drywall, okay? Because we want to keep this. Remember, that is storage. Yeah. That is storage. This is your basement. Wow. Uh, heating. Like that. All set up into a manifold system that balances and controls the heating loops throughout the home. Your HRV takes the air and moves it throughout the house and runs your air conditioning completely solely ducted on its own. It goes through one air cleaning system, a secondary stage of HEPA filter, okay? Mm -hmm. So we are really, really clean. The bros and the plumbers, Martin and Adam, lived in this basement, I swear. Frank and his guys, Joe, like Joe has lived in here too. I love my guys. I love them all. I love you guys. <laughs> the lien is still on the house. I think it's 65000 So we had to um, take a demand loan out to secure it for the lien and set that money aside. So we're paying interest basically on a loan that was just sitting there. Uh, and so depending on how the court case comes out, if and when we get to court, I don't know. Uh, how that's going to proceed, but we're still in the thick of it, dealing with lawyers and dealing with, you know, questions and lots of stress. It's going to be nice to come home. I think you deserve to come home. Okay. I think it's about time okay. you get your butt back home. Okay. You don't realize just how it can touch you and how fortunate we are for that. So it's restored 
it was never really gone, but I think it's just redeemed it and, and validated that there's a lot of good out there. Um, we're pretty lucky, you know. So, but there's a lot of people in the world that need more luck too, so. Once again, every time I think I'm like, I can't do this anymore, I'm going to give up. This is like driving me insane. That last moment reminds me, reminds everyone here why we do what we do. Not only to make a difference, but to help people. Thank you. It's not really a gift, it's more of a don't forget us. <laughs> so. Thanks for letting us lean on you. Welcome to our family, Jill. Doing Thank you for ready. building our house, Juliana. Forever grateful in our hearts, forever welcome in our home. Thank you all so much, Christine. Thank you so much. Um, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Joe. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. That's for you guys.